Yes, it is. Very good. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm so, so excited that you all are here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday night to spend time with me. I appreciate you. So before we get started, in case you don't know who I am, because I always forget to do this, my name is Kristen Newman. Um, I am the owner of Infinite Heart and Soul at infiniteheartandsoul.com. And who am I? I am a multifaceted channel. I channel guides, spirit guides. I'm a medium, um, intuitive, empath, all those amazing things. Kundalini Reiki master and teacher, animal communicator, animal communicator. <laughs> We can do so many things. I'm all about living paranormally and being limitless. That is what I'm about. Um, so I am so blessed and grateful for you all to be here. My dear friend, Sherry is here. Wave Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Sherry is my sweet, dear, talented, amazing friend. She has enchanted card readings on Facebook. So it's really amazing. She has people that do sessions and all that kind of stuff to learn how to read tarot and oracle cards all of that. Absolutely amazing. And Sherry has her own Oracle deck that's out too. You can see links on Infinite Heart and Soul page as well as Enchanted Card Readings too. So and thank Tara. You, Sherry. And Tara. So thank you, Sherry, for your assistance and help today. Absolutely. So above all else, before we begin tonight, because tonight is about, it's going to be a dramedy. That's what I tell all of you students out there that know me. We laugh, we cry, then we laugh again. So I might start, I'm not going to say might start crying. Trista, you know I'm going to start crying because we just do that stuff. So <laughs> it's a safe space, right? So it's all about reinventing the self and mental health with spirit. There are so oh, many down, you know, rabbit holes to go down with all of this. So I'm going to do my best and we might have to do a part two because I want to do a Q&A at the end. I'm not going to be reading everybody. It's just any questions that you might have about the topic. So with that, let's go ahead and set the space because that's important, right? Because as everybody came in, if you heard me, it was like, Ooh, someone else just came in, someone else came in because there's energies, all of our guides, all of your energies are all there as well. And I do wanna do a shout out to my mom. Hi, Mama Dara, she's always there. Hi, Mommy. So that's my mom, everyone. She's on absolutely everything that I do. I love you, Mom. Mwah. So let's set the space. If you wanna close your eyes with me, and just take a couple of good breaths. Just breathe in through the nose. And when you breathe out through the mouth, breathe out the stuff. Breathe out the day. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe in that light. <sighs> just let a sigh out. Let it out. Be exaggerated. You can do this throughout the day. So when you are feeling it, breathe in through the nose. <sighs> breathe out the day. Breathe in the light. <sighs> breathe out the day and just breathe normally. Do you feel that shift, that difference? When you do intention with your breath, a lot of times it's all you need to do. And your intention is to breathe in the prana, the life, the life force, and then breathe out the day and the heaviness. So just sink in your seat. your hand on your heart. Both hands, one hand, whatever's comfortable. And picture two stars under your feet. This is your earth star chakra. And grow your earth star chakra. You see these roots come down with your earth star, go deep, deep into the earth, into the ground, down to Gaia, mother earth's heart and core. Just grow your roots, grow your tree deep into the core. We're going to do one extra step. Your root chakra at the base of your spine, the bottom right there. Grow roots from your root chakra down into the earth along with your earth star chakra. Really anchoring in. Gaia, please ground us and protect us as we're in this sacred space. We love, honor, and are grateful for you. We invoke your energy into our being now, that feeling of love, of protection, 
and your connection, that beautiful divine feminine energy. Tis done, tis done, tis done, thank you, show me. Now at the top of your head, the crown chakra. God creator all that is, it is commanded that you pull clear, cancel and delete on all levels and resolve on the history level, any wayward watchers, attachments, any low vibrational beings, entities or thought forms, anything that does not serve our highest and greatest good, we send to unconditional love now. Please surround all of us in pure divine light of love, of connection, the sacred space, to share, to heal, to grow and release all that no longer serves. Tis done, tis done, tis done. Show me. And just be in the heart space for a moment. And I'm gonna do the singing bowl just to do a reset. Just breathe. And as you breathe in this heart space, set the intention to connect to your soul star chakra, inviting in all of your guides of the highest good to come forward and surround all of us. Taking a good breath in and then out through the mouth. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Just a nice way to start that connecting. You wanna connect and protect. That's what I tell my daughter, Emily, because it's a quick, easy thing. She actually has it as a widget on her phone, protect and connect each day. So if you're not having that practice, please, other than meditation, you wanna protect, connect and protect each day because all of us, it, empathic energy, it's very important um, to guard your temple, right? From anything coming through. So bear with me tonight. There is so much that I wrote. So I need to check off what I wrote. Yeah, I know. I see your face, Lansing. <laughs> this is page one. I've got a couple of them over here. So we got some stuff to discuss. <laughs> so, man, I'm already feeling it. <laughs> I'm sucking back the tears. So, this was difficult to write because again, there is so much. And I asked my guides, I'm like, wait a minute, why am I egoically trying to write all of this? Hey guides, can I call you in please for your help? Oh yeah, I'm a channel, that's kind of what I do. So they help me narrow things down. So, and then because I'm a channel, they might deviate and bring more stuff in because those, my students, you know what I'm talking about. They just kind of come in and do their own thing. So, okay, I have like sticky number one, sticky number two, my goodness. Thank God I only have two stickies, but I wrote on a, a lot on these babies. So let's begin with my backstory. <laughs> yes, Sherry, <laughs> here we go. So let me first tell you all that I have anxiety. <laughs> because I'm sharing all of this publicly that I'm putting on YouTube. And I'm doing it because I'm sh I want to show absolutely everybody that there is no shame in any of this. We are here to grow. This is why we're here. This is why we're born here. If we were born here and it's tra-la-la, then what's the point? What's the point? We're here to learn, to navigate, to grow. And we have this lovely thing called the ego and this better thing called the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind, I wrote this down because the guides were telling me this, the subconscious holds the patterns, the shadows, the emotional blind spots, 
Not working on them brings mirrors into your life, in relationships, in situations, and it's time to break the cycle. It's all about breaking the cycle by looking at them. And that is the hardest thing to do. When you are anxious, you have fear, we don't want to look at it. We want to lock it in behind a door, hide the key, throw the key in Dubai, and haul it the other way. That's just what we want to do. But when you look at it, there's such power in it. So it sounds weird, but you can program yourself to a new set point. So breaking the cycle of more of the low vibe patterns and resetting yourself to create higher vibe patterns. You're resetting your frequency point. That's what this is about because we have chakras and energy and we wanna open up the chakras. We want them to flow beautifully and reset our frequency point. With that, let me share some stories. One of my main, we all have a Chiron, right? The wounded healer in astrology, what we're meant here to really heal. And then there's some other stuff from past lives, from our ancestral line, karmic contracts, all that fun stuff. So one of my Chirons was bullying by someone close to me. And then it followed me because I didn't learn from it. So I would dim my light and I didn't feel like I could do anything. And it followed me through friendships, through careers. I had bosses and all of that that I would have bullying issues with. And along with that, here we go. <laughs> I developed severe heart problems. I have supraventricular and ventricular tachycardia, which basically means my heart's electrical system freaks out. <laughs> it goes more than 120 beats per minute and it totally messes with the body. My blood pressure rises and falls, digestive issues, um, fainting. I'm more susceptible to heart attack and stroke. Um, so it does absolutely everything. There are sensory issues, so, um, a lot of times I, it's hard for me to, I can't like type and look up and look over and, and write. It's too much for me. I get dizzy sick from it as well. So I tried working with this. Um, I was a banker. I was a teller manager and then I um, was at the desk and did loans and all that good stuff. I was a floater. So I would go around to different branches and I would train people, train the teller managers, all that kind of stuff. And I was very, very good at my job. I loved my job. I was very good at it. And then all of this started happening and I've had several heart surgeries and they progressively got worse. Um, we feel that my last heart surgery caused more of an issue because when you have ventricular tachycardia, the lower chamber of the heart, um, you are more susceptible to uh, issues during surgery. Um, and I feel that's what happened and it made it worse because every time they would go into ablate or burn the little parts that would light up, it was like a hydra. <laughs> it would, there were more that would just pop up. And he's like, I've never seen anything like it. Burn it and then like several more would pop up. I have scar tissue behind my mitral valve. It's a hot mess in there. So with working every day, I was so sick. The branch that I worked at, these people, the boss was interesting, but everybody else, was absolutely phenomenal. And they were beautiful souls and I was blessed to work with them because I have a friend that was behind the teller line. I was at the desk and I wasn't feeling well. And I'm like, I'll be right back. And I would go into the restroom in the back. And this friend of mine was with the customer and she goes, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna pass you to someone else because my friend went in the restroom and she hasn't been back in 20 minutes. 
and I'm afraid. And I passed out in that bathroom. Fortunately, I didn't hit my head. I was praying to God they didn't call 911 because I was so embarrassed and I was petrified. So I'm like, please don't, please don't. Look, I'm good. And I was moving around. <laughs> like, I'm fine. Look, we're good. Just passed out. No big deal. But I always felt like a burden. So those with anxiety, you worry about what everybody else thinks. And then with the bullying on top of it, just to give you the mindset, men are the mess. What do people think of me? I have to look like I'm good. I have to look good. I have to look fine. But then I would be upset and emotional because I looked fine. I look fine, but you don't know that I have my ice pack right here in my lap with my wrists on it. And my water here that has to be cold, even though I'm told to drink warm water by my acupuncturist because it's good for the system, <laughs> but I drink my cold water. So it was this battle every single day. And I have a daughter and I have a husband and okay, I need to do laundry and then I need to do this. And then, oh my gosh, I, I okay, now I need to go home. And I was at work. And I think one of the biggest things that was just so embarrassing is I um, will get very dizzy and it can drop to my stomach and then I get nauseous. And I was throwing up so much that I had, um, I called them blood freckles around my eyes. And I was very scrawny. And um, I remember calling my boss at the last place um, that I worked, which is close to home. And his name is Mike. And um, I called him and I said, I'm so sorry. I threw up in the bathroom and I'm so sick and dizzy that I couldn't throw out the bag, but I tied it. I tried the best I could to clean up, but I was so sick and dizzy. So he's like, Kristen, don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's not like, you know, even if I have to clean stuff up, it don't worry about it. And my husband would say to me, what, what are you doing? You're going to work and you're coming home and going straight to bed. You're barely eating. You can't function. I had some kind of life on the weekends, um, but I needed to get my strength. And then once I got my strength back, it was back again. So I went from full time and I went down to like 18 hours to try and figure this out so I can continue working. Because I didn't want to just not and have it be an excuse to not. And my boss, I was in a room, um, I had, you know, we have all these tasks, certain tasks that are designated to us. And I was in a room doing some of my tasks. And that was my moment to cry, <laughs> to just kind of let it out. And he walked in and I was so embarrassed. And he's like, don't, he was so kind and his words meant so much. But then there were the people that didn't get it. I stood there at the teller line and passed out. They helped me get back up and sit in the chair, which spins. <laughs> so I was like, holding myself because the sucker was spinning. It's kind of funny. But, and then one of the other guys came over and said, I'll, I'll balance your drawer for you. So you just watch me and I'll balance your drawer and, and one of us will take you home and then Ray can come get the car. We'll follow you, something like that. And my immediate teller manager said, no, she's fine. She could sit there and work. There were so many words I could have said at that moment, and I'll leave that to your own imagination. <laughs> but I didn't say them. And I didn't stand up for myself. And I sat there and went, okay. And I literally was holding on to everything as I walked and I was helping a customer, and the customer's like, can I have 20s instead of 10s? Sure, dragged myself. I mean, it was, I was totally embarrassed. And she goes, are, are you okay? <laughs> like, are you here against your will? Blink twice, you know, like that kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm just not feeling good right now. I'm hoping it, it'll, it'll just pass. I just need to eat, you know, that kind of thing. And I really loved it when I had to wear an event monitor, 
you know, the halter monitors you wear for 24 hours, the event monitors you wear for a longer period of time, and you actually call a number and hold the device up against the phone, and it makes all these really cool noises and is very high techy and it transmits everything to my cardiac specialist. So I loved wearing that. I loved and hated it because I would I totally break out wearing them and it looks like I've been absolutely mauled by an octopus. And um, but it was something they could see. They could see, see something's wrong with me. But yet it was like, but I don't want people to see, but I need them to see. So you know where the torment was going there with the anxiety and where that started. And then Ray and I, one night we went to Walmart and I looked at Ray and I said, I'm so sick. I can't feel my face, my lips. I can't feel my lips. I don't know what's going on. So he helped me to the car and I was holding, he blasted the air and I was leaning forward and I said, just go. I said, don't wait, just go. My words were weird. And I was laying in bed with him and he goes, don't fight it, Kristen, what's wrong? And I'm like, I feel like if I just let go, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go. So we were on the couch and I was still getting these weird feelings. And I looked at him and I said, call 911 now, call 911. And he looked at me in complete terror. And as soon as I said, call 911, I was shaking unbelievably, like my teeth were chattering. And when the paramedics got there and one was triaging me, the other one was asking Ray questions. Emily went to our wonderful neighbor's house. They were phenomenal. They stood outside. They grabbed Emily, she can sleep over here. She was taken care of, I didn't have to worry about a thing. They're amazing. It takes a village, right? And these people are amazing, all of them. We're very lucky with that. So the guy that was talking to Ray actually said, what is she on? And he said, well, she does have beta blockers and I have all of her medication here. And he goes, sir, what is she on? And he looked and he goes, you think she's like on drugs? And he was like, uh, no, like, no, she's absolutely petrified. I was, had such anxiety. I was shaking. It was the weirdest. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. And when I was talking, like my whole voice was vibrating. It was so, I, my teeth were chattering and I kept looking at the guy and I said, I'm so scared. Am I going to die? I'm so scared. What's happening? And that was just my response. And he's like, I have to ask and check. And he's like, she's not on anything. You're talking to someone who's afraid of taking stuff. So I didn't have a heart attack or stroke. It was a really bad episode, tachycardia episode. Um, my blood pressure was dangerously high. So they kept like popping the pill under the tongue. Um, and when I came home, I felt like I was 900 years old just to walk to get the mail was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know, like I was done for the day. Um, and I remember sitting in the front room and one of my neighbors came over and was visiting just to check in to see how I was. So sweet, Teresa, mom. And um, I remember, <sighs> you know, after everything and I get like that. I have episodes where I'm breathy. If some of you have seen, I do lives and I'm like, okay, I'm breathy, we're good. So I try and talk about it more. But I'm very mindful because of the bullying aspect, because of how I'm seen, because of an aunt, a great aunt who is, when she was, she was 100 years old when she passed. But man, I was her Barbie doll and I couldn't change anything. I was blonde for the longest time. I didn't want to darken my hair or do anything. I had to be her little Barbie doll. And that was always on my mind. So it was like all these different things at once. And Ray said to me, you can't go back to work after this he goes because you're not going to last much longer and I can't do it alone so I called my boss and said I'm going to stay home I can't come back to work and he goes really <laughs> he goes I'm, I'm glad you're doing it he goes we're gonna miss you and you know <laughs> we had to make referrals at work, um, you know, like 
refer products and services and everything. I was 18 hours and I was at the top. And I would constantly go on FMLA like for a month at a time. Cause my doctor was like, you need to be out now. You're look at that blood pressure. You had like two episodes while you were here. How are you doing this? And I made it every month. I made that goal. Even when I came back and there was like a week left of the month, man, I worked and I made it. So when I stayed home, the depression started. I was worthless. I wasn't doing anything to help support the family. My husband was doing everything. I could barely cook. There's something called the spoon theory. And it's like, you're given 10 spoons. Get up in the morning, feed the dog. There's a spoon, hand it over. You have nine more spoons. Take a shower, that's one. Blow dry my hair, that's two. That's three spoons so far. Gotta do laundry. It's not so bad if I throw it in the washing machine, but dryer and folding, forget that. So you have these certain spoons and then being around other people and talking is a lot. So I always felt uncomfortable and I didn't know what these gifts or anything were yet, but I would get anxiety around people as well, plus my own stuff. And then I would start getting anxious Emily's staying at school later. Is, is she okay? Oh my God, the bus. It, Ray works in construction. Oh my God, did he get in an accident? Oh my God, they're talking about an accident on 75. Was that him? Was that him? Pick up, pick up, pick up. Oh my God, am I going to have a heart attack? Am I going to drop dead here? And no one's going to find me until they get home. All these different things would set me, like the silliest things. I can't even think of it right now, but you know what I mean? Like all of the, your mind just goes everywhere. So then I had my awakening. And for those of you that don't know, an awakening is just a term. And you don't have to worry about any of that. It was a light bulb moment. It was a smack in the head by the divine that says, there's got to be something more to life than this. Bing, light bulb moment started to see the 111s, 1111s, find the feathers everywhere. Angels, angels, angels were the first ones to come forward. Then I started seeing in my mind's eye, I could never see it. If you said picture an apple or a rose, I couldn't do that. So when I started seeing in my mind's eye and I ran out to my husband and daughter and I started telling them about all this, I was embarrassed to tell my husband. And Ray and I are high school sweethearts since we were 13 years old. And um, I was really embarrassed to tell him. And when I told him, he goes, do you not think I'm open-minded? You weirdo. <laughs> Cause he always likes to tease. It was the sweetest thing. And then I told my daughter and it's like, you don't have to believe in any of this stuff, like religion and politics and everything else. You form your own opinion. This is my personal path. This is about you learning your own path, but I'll teach you what I know if you're open to it. That's when hearing, seeing, feeling, knowing came forward. And I'm wearing my ankh today. So it's like the cross with the circle on top because Horus, the Egyptian God was one of the first that I saw um, that helped me with the law of attraction. Very connected to the angelic realm. My higher self is a seraphim. Um, I have a lot of guides. So they all came forward and helped in their own way. Biggest one was when I asked God, who am I? And he said, you are love. That's what we all are. We are love having a physical experience. That's what we are. So I'm looking at the time and going an hour. Okay. <laughs> So the things that they taught me and led me to. I'm gonna start with more yogic practices 
and things that help. So for me, there's vasovagal maneuvers. Please, I am not in the medical field. So always check with your physician with things, okay? Um, this is what worked for me. And if it resonates with you, it's a conversation you can have to see if it can assist you. So I love my ice pack because the vasovagal maneuvers are to basically shock the system. So when I was at my cardiologist office and when I'm in an episode, which is like every time I'm there, um, they brought in a bowl of ice water and I'd stick my hands in it. So my wrist, because the veins in your wrists are right there, can go right there to like shock the heart back into place. I would cough a lot. That's my own thing um, to try and trigger. So bearing down. Um, but when I was at work, I didn't want to look like I was bearing down <laughs> while I was at work and standing behind the teller line. So um, I always had an ice pack. I have several of them. Um, I, right now I'm just like laying my wrists on them, um, but I like to put it over my chest or behind my neck, especially when I start getting dizzy and nauseous and all of that. It's just a way for it to help me. But when you're out and about and you have an anxiety attack, um, the vagus nerve is linked with the paras parasympathetic nervous system. And Vegas basically means to wander. So it's that wandering nerve that's around the body. It is in the throat, it's behind the ear, all that stuff. So we can stimulate it to induce that calming effect. So there are different things. This little nook right here that's in your ear. This one's more difficult for me to get because I my nails aren't really long, but it kind of pokes me, but it's right here in the ear. And if you just like take it and you just massage it, forward a few and you're not like drilling your brain you're just gently massaging the skin because it's the vagus nerve it's it's there it'll feel it you don't need to like Mur. so you're just gently massaging right there then in the ear just like a little bit in the back you can do the same thing forward and back the one i like and when i go to my massage therapist she when i when the guides led me to this. It was like, oh, that makes sense because they'll tell me pull the ears. And I didn't understand. And when I go to my massage therapist, she does Reiki and massage and reflexology. And what do they do when you get a massage? They pull down, they pull down, and then they pull out. And they pull down. And man, does that feel good. They pull down and then they pull out. And when you're doing these things, be mindful. Because when you're having an anxiety attack, what are we doing? <laughs> you can't catch your breath. You're like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't get a good breath. So the other thing I like to do, and there's one called triangle breathing, and I'll show you that in a moment. But the one that I like to do is just breathe in for a count, hold for a second, and then breathe out. You wanna hold for a second to like, let everything expand, let everything fill up with that oxygen and then you breathe out. So just breathing in through the nose for like three, hold, three, and just being mindful of it. And then you incorporate, pull the ear, breathe in, hold, one, two, three, there's also a spot behind your ear and you can just rub up. It's like that bone back there. You just rub your finger up and hold and down and hold. And you can do this. Like I can sit there like this. I mean, you just rub. No one will know. No one will know. Even if you just pull your ear or something. Doing things when you're around people because when do you have anxiety attacks? when you're the heck around everybody else and everyone can see you in your drama and you don't want anyone to know it. And you're trying to be cool, calm and collective and you're like, <laughs> you know, like that face you make and you're sucking in tears and blah, it's crazy. So these are practices and knowing I'm okay. I'm okay. This too shall pass. I'm okay, why, am, why? Why am, what is, what is scaring me right now? I'm okay. What's scaring me? Just saying that in your head, what am I scared of right now? Whatever it might be. 
this morning I had the slightest panic attack. And it's because I got a new couch and they gave me the wrong one and I didn't realize it. And it is huge in this room. Like when Emily walked in, she was like, and I'm like, it's big. It's really big. And my dog, Lola, who's right here, she gets anxious when I get anxious. So she needed to be calmed by Emily. And I wasn't totally freaking out. I was like, okay, we're okay. And I could feel my heart was going a little bit. How silly, right? But this is what happens to us, right? We get like anxiety over the weirdest things. So I measured it and I'm like, oh, this is, this is the sofa. I ordered the love seat. They just did the wrong one. We're good. Kristen, we're good. We're good. But I had an anxiety attack over that. And I had to say to myself, why are you anxious, Kristen? Why are you anxious in the middle of me doing that? And it wasn't even horrible, but I could feel it. And the dog started because she could feel it. And I was just breathing and I'm like, we'll figure it out. I return the couch if this isn't it, because although it's very comfortable, it's huge. So I called, no big deal. They're re-delivering the one next week. But I just wanted to throw that out there too, because don't be hard on yourself if you're like, this is so stupid. No, it's not. I probably had the same anxiety attack as you did over that. And you might think it's silly and stupid or whatever. It's not just about the big hard stuff. It can be simple stuff. So triangle breathing, because there's the vagus nerve in the throat, what you do is you breathe, if they call it triangle because it's the same amount of times that you hold the breath and breathe in and breathe out. That's why it's called the triangle breath. It's a yogic practice. So they do it for four. Sometimes if I'm really, when I'm in an episode, when you're in an anxiety attack, you can't breathe. You can't get your breath. So if you need to hold your breath, you're gonna pass out. So just take some good breaths. Even if you can just do two. So you breathe in for two, hold for two, put your head into your neck, breathe out for two and put your head back. Triangle breath. The person I watched that, this popped up on my screen. This is what channeling does. When I needed help, I either received the downloads of these things or something just pops up randomly on your YouTube screen that you've never even looked at or Googled or anything. And it just pops up there, divinely timed. So breathe in for two, hold for two out for two and this is activating and touching that vagus nerve i because of my issues if it's super sensory that day and i get very dizzy i can't do that because just my head like that bending down like when i went to the doctor's office i didn't speak up and they didn't have a seat for me to sit down and tie my shoes because i had to take them off when they weighed me and checked my height darn it, I wanted that extra few inches from my sneakers because I had like, so that's probably why they had me take off my sneakers, but I had to bend down to tie my sneakers and that messes with me too. So, okay. So those are, those are some of the physical things that you can do to help. So now let's get into the other stuff. The stuff that is really hard because it's mind. It's your mind. What do we do when something happens? Mom, husband, spouse, friend, we search outside of ourselves. Yes, we're pack animals. We're meant to have this love and support. Have your village, have your people. Have a buddy that you can message or call when you're having an attack or something. Yes, 100%. But you have the power and the limitlessness and the divine within you to heal. And above anything else, talking with a healthcare professional, and there is no shame at all whatsoever in having to get medication. If that's the route, 
that resonates with you to go. I did not go that way because I said to my cardiac specialist, of course I have anxiety. I think I'm gonna die every day. <laughs> Wouldn't anyone else? To me, that's like, if I didn't, something was wrong with me. So I was dead set on not taking anything. I can do this. So I actually was attuned to Kundalini Reiki and I have certain practices that I do of self-balancing and cleansing. And I have felt at times my blood pressure correct itself, which is amazing. Sometimes it helps me sleep. Sometimes I can at least relax. And sometimes I meant to ride that wave. Okay. Mental health, there's depression, bipolar. I have two people in particular. One is a cousin of mine that committed suicide at 63 years old a few months ago. And one is a friend of mine that I went to high school with that married my friend. And he committed suicide because he had these gifts and he didn't know how to process them. He didn't know how to come out and tell anyone. So he ended his life. I received permission from my friend Anne to share this. I will share the story as to how that came about because it's funny. <laughs> and Derek is hysterical. He is just the most fun person, give the shirt off of his back and he's still that way in spirit. Always coming forward. And I was talking to Anne yesterday. She's not able to make it on tonight, but I love you, Anne. Um, but she lost her husband because he couldn't deal with his gifts. So that was a depression and anxiety and struggle on a totally different aspect, right? There's so many reasons why all of us can get depressed. There can be hormonal disorders and all that kind of stuff that can ball up with everything else. And then you add life situations in there and it's like, burnt, 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 you know, just keep piling it on. But when you look at it for what it is, what is this? Why am I fearing it? Why do I think something's wrong with me? It's a process to talk yourself through it. But I believe in this so much, I promise you. By doing this practice, incorporating something, mark it on your calendar one month from the day that you start it. And then when you look back, because it takes at least 21 days to form a habit. So when you do these practices, allow yourself a full month. Probably within a couple of weeks, you'll notice a shift. I was, I seemed to be glass half full. Chrissy, she's so happy, she's so bubbly, hey! But I wasn't. Look at Robin Williams. He was a comedian. His job was to make people laugh and he was good at it. So you just never know what someone's going through. My guides told me to look at it and ask it what it wants. When I'm feeling anxiety, sometimes you spontaneously just get anxious in the body and you're like, why are you doing this? I know some people that have had that as well. And asking the body what it wants. So it is very difficult for me to exercise. I used to exercise an hour maybe a little bit more when I was able to. And then I'm like, I, I felt scrawny. I didn't feel like myself when I first stayed home. Um, my hair texture changed. It was very straight. And now it's, I can wear it curly. I can have like my Shakira hair, I call it. And, um, but I can't wear it straight. It looks like I'm wearing a wig. I really stink. Ask Megan, my friend who does my hair. I really stink at straightening hair. Um, 
I didn't know, I didn't feel like me. I would try and do it the way I would always do it. And it just, it wasn't me. And I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. And then I started using affirmations. So those of you know that I'm really big with affirmations. And the point to remember as well is understand that we are two beings. We are the ego that makes us human, that tells us, you think you can pull that outfit off, give me a break. You really think you're good at this, all that kind of stuff. And then we're the spirit that resides in that heart space. We're the divine. And when you realize this and you ask, when you ask to feel them, I want to feel my spirit. It is a process because it's your intuition that you sometimes ignore. That tells you go left instead of right. That tells you this person says they're okay, but you know they're not. You know those nudges, you know that intuition. It's your guidance, that's your spirit. When you work on that, you don't have to be a full on channel and do readings and mediumship and all that kind of stuff. You can build your intuition to live your best, most amazing life by naturally just opening yourself up. You don't have to be all weird like me if you don't want to, but it's kind of fun, so. One of us, one of us, <laughs> join us. It's a lot of fun in my head. I tell my dad that all the time. It's a lot of fun in this head. You gotta come in and play in here. But we're two beings. So understand that. Understand we all have something. We all have a past. We have, the, we have family stuff and there is nothing to be ashamed of because the stuff that you hear from your friends are like, oh my gosh. And then stuff that happens to you, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed by this. I can't share this stuff. That's embarrassing. But understand that by growing this, you start growing in yourself. And then you can start feeling, hope this makes sense when I say it. I can freak out over something like when my Lola had gotten sick and my ego was totally freaking out, but I had a sense of calm at the same time. Talk about a trippy feeling and feeling it both. And I'm like, I put my hand on my heart, which the guides say, when your attention is up here, Put something to draw your attention here. Put your hand on your heart and drop, you drop to the heart space. The energy feels different. If you put your hands on your head and then you put your hands here or you think about something and you put your hands on your head and you're thinking about what you have to do and what's wrong and oh my gosh, and I'm worried and everything else and put your hands here, feel that energy. It feels tense. And then put your hand on your heart. What is spirit saying? I know what ego's saying because she's loud. <laughs> we know what she's saying. Kristen is loud. But you put your hand on your heart space and you start listening to that voice. Let her out. Let your inner child out. Let your spirit out. Let it speak to you and let it tell you. A lot of times we don't, we don't want to hear what she's got to say. He or she has to say. But I knew when Lola was sick, hey, she's at the vet right now. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's working out best case scenario. That's the thing I say. Everything is working out best case scenario. I trust, I trust. Guides, can you give me a sign that everything is okay? But if you go, where's my sign? Where's my sign? You're not gonna get your sign, people. Stop doing it. I've done it. Don't do it. Stop, stop it. Can you give me a sign? Okay, let's get a cup of coffee. Let's have something to eat. Let's talk to someone. Oh my gosh, there's a butterfly. Thank you for my sign. And you know it's your sign because it smacks you in the face. It resonates with you and it just smacks you in that heart space and you know. Don't search for it. And then you'll be mindful and say, oh, I'm searching for it, which is a huge, big, fat win for you because you're observing that you're forcing it. So as you start talking to yourself, 
and it sounds weird to talk to yourself. I full on have conversations with myself and my husband will go, what? I'm like, nope, just talking to me, myself and I. I'm having a staff meeting. <laughs> Did you see that meme? It's hysterical. <laughs> I work with spirits. So if I'm talking to myself, I'm having a staff meeting. Best meme ever. So I'm like, I'm having a staff meeting. I don't worry about it anymore. I'm totally comfortable in my weird. Took a while, but I'm comfortable in my weird. So let's, I got two and a half pages left, people. I think there's going to be a part de. <laughs> so let's talk about chakras real quick. Just a quick crash course. There are seven main ones in the body. So you have the root at the base right there that we grew our root out of. That is I need. The root is I need. We have the sacral chakra. And all of your chakras are pretty much 12 inches apart-ish. You have the sacral that's below the belly button. That's I want. You have the solar plexus, which is above the belly button, which is I can. You have the heart chakra, I love. The throat chakra, I express. Third eye, I see. The crown, I am. Now listen to what the guides told me. And this is one of those divine duh meanings. They said, what are the chakras, Kristen? And they asked me questions. I love it when they ask me questions because that's when I learn the most, not just with the downloads, but when they ask you questions. What are the chakras? Well, they're energy points in the body. Duh, I know that. <laughs> But why then does each chakra govern a different aspect of a human's life? I want, I need, I love, I see, I speak. Because we're meant to clear these chakras. We're meant to expand our energy, which is clarity, health. We all choose all of that in this lifetime as well. That was my thing with my guides as to why I have what I have. So don't think that something's blocked because you have a heart problem. My heart chakra was the first to open and they actually put their hand in my higher heart chakra to open that. So don't think you're closed because you have, oh, I have endometriosis or something like that. So that's closed. That is not necessarily true. So discover that for yourself. But does that make sense? When you look at the chakras, there's a reason why they each have a different point. So the I need, that root in this, and the I want, the root in the sacral chakra, those areas, if you've had any kind of sexual abuse, that hits you right there. The bullying, the self-worth, all of that, that hit me at my heart chakra. My crown chakra, my I am, there was no I am, it was nothing there. I was spinning in the same cycle, same cycle. I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. That's why they, we have these chakras. So the biggest thing that we can do, upon awakening, I always have a practice of connecting and protecting, of connecting with mother earth, connecting with God, with source with my guides, the angels, the universe, whatever you want to call it for you. Exercise. They led me to, there's um, so many things online, YouTube and all of that. And I follow, it's called fitnessblender.com. This isn't like any kind of infomercial. I'm just sharing my stuff. Fitnessblender.com. I've been following them for years. It's Daniel and Kelly that run it. They actually are so blessed that they have more people working for them, but you can like buy packages, which I, which I never did, but they have like quick 10 minute videos and they always show you the easier versions. Static squat. Can I do them today? Let's try. But all is mine because when I do them, I'm all in it. I'm picturing every muscle 
being fueled and I have this positive energy. And I always say affirmations. Like I love that my body knows what to do with food that does not serve me. I love that I am at my ideal best weight for me and I'm confident and I'm able to share this with others. I am more fit now than I was exercising an hour a day. I kid you not. 10 minutes in the morning. They also led me to intermittent fasting. I had no idea what it was. And it was one day I, um, they said they were saying something I was channeling and they were saying something about food. And I'm like, I don't, I don't quite understand. And I guess I wasn't doing what they asked me to do. And I turned on the today show and they were talking about intermittent fasting. And I'm like, huh, that's what you mean. Then I looked it up. I stopped eating at 7 p.m. I don't start eating until 10 a.m. ish. And that works for me. It needs to be something that resonates with you. There's subconscious beliefs in there that need to come out of there for the affirmations to start working, right? Okay, I jumped all over the place. So let me just take a moment and have some water. So we are not our thoughts. We are the programming by society, by our upbringing, by our surroundings, by our friends, all of that. That's why we're all so unique and different. We have different upbringings, different experiences. We are not our thoughts. We are computers. As above, so below. So everything you see in this reality has some kind of spiritual aspect, actually. So when you're looking at computers and you can download and you can delete these things, a lot of times we can delete some of the things, but they're gonna try and creep back up. So sometimes I have to like learn to say no, all that kind of stuff. Learn that it's okay to speak my truth and say I'm not feeling well. Because that's the other thing I do and then I get anxious is I have an episode in front of someone and I will sit there with a smile on my face until I throw up or pass out. Until it's like basically too late. And I do this with my best friend and I won't show it. And then I get tormented again, just like I would do with myself at work. Because you don't want to burden anyone with, oh, she's sick again or the sympathy of it and all that, you know where your mind goes. So it is a daily process for me. So something happened when I, um, a few weeks ago, I have these two big hanging ferns just outside my patio door. And in one of them, I had birds have a nest in there and had little babies and you can hear them beep 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 it's the cutest thing and it's amazing because we would be sitting outside on the patio and mama would be going back and forth cautiously you know she goes from spot to spot making her beep beep so her babies know she's coming and then she slowly goes around and goes in there and feeds them because we watch well I was watering and my husband's so sweet because it's hard for me to water because it's the pulling of the hose. So he grabs the hose. I have one of those light hoses. Um, and, but he pulls it for me and I just walk around and spray. So I was spraying it and I accidentally sprayed in, cause it's over an underhang. I sprayed that fern. And I mean, they, they're birds, they live outside, it rains. Well, the baby bird flew out and I have this vintage um, gate that's on the wall right there next to it. And the baby bird went to the gate and just held on to it. And the mama bird is on the couch and she's beep, 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 you know, talking to her baby. And I'm like, Ray, I need to help the bird. He's like, well, he flew out. He'll fly, fly back in. I said, no, he can't. Cause I felt into him and he needed help. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to just watch. I'm not going to jump into it, but I could feel he needed help. He couldn't get back in there. 
because he's just learning how to do all this stuff. So he got himself out and was holding on to that gate. So Ray goes, okay, you, I think you're right. So I went outside and Ray lifted me up and I put my gloves on, my garden gloves, and I went to grab, you know, I'm like, I'm talking to the baby gently. The mama bird came over and kind of fluttered by my ear, like, go away. And the baby bird shoved itself in the gate and let out this screech. And I'm like, it's okay. So I lifted it out and I grabbed him gently and I put him right back in his nest. And of course I was traumatized. I'm like, poor baby. And I, oh, I caused that because I did, you know, all the stuff. And when I calmed myself down, cause it's like, it's there, they get rained on and all of that. It was the response of the bird and everything else. But the guide said to me, watch the birds the next day. And I said, okay. So I was sitting outside on the patio and lo and behold, mama bird, tweet, 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 tweet. And they'd poke their little heads out and the mama bird was strategic, you know, going there and feeding the, feeding her babies. The bird, the baby bird and the mother aren't anxious. They're not dwelling over what happened like I was. They just went on. When you watch a baby, and you know something breaks and they're screaming and they're crying and it's the end of their life because that happened and then you fix it and you give it back to them and they're like ah. and they just like go on without i mean they can fall and hit themselves and scratch themselves and it's like oh my god oh okay because they haven't learned yet the programming that we're supposed to dwell on it and then we're supposed to fear stuff because you fell off your bike and now you're going to be afraid of your bike and then you're going to this and then you're going to that so this is about, again, reprogramming the self. It is hard work, very hard work. Because I had to say things to myself like hard stuff. Am I causing myself to be sick? Am I, do I want myself to be sick? Am I defined by being sick? I did all this stuff because I wanted to make sure that I didn't want any of that stuff. But I really didn't. You have to look at yourself. You have to really look at yourself. And people don't like to look at themselves, right? You don't want to see the dark, ugly stuff. But I promise you, we have to look at that. The shadow sides, the emotional blind spots, in order to discover what wants to be healed. If you can't look at it, you can't heal it. And I don't want to say fix it. You can't heal it. You can't give it love and heal it. And then it's mindfulness throughout the day. Just like this morning, I had my little anxiety attack about the ginormous couch in my front room and it was all okay. I overcame it easily. It sounds silly. Okay. Every negative thought that I would have, which is a lot, it was a lot. God, those are not my thoughts. I give them to you. My anxieties, my worries, I give them to you. I trust. Every single time I had that thought. That was a lot <laughs> during the day. You'll say that a lot and it's okay. And then it gets easier. Like you might have something creep back up because the ego just wants to keep you in homeostasis right where you're at, doesn't want you to change, wants you to stay in that fear and everything else because that's safe zone. It thinks it's safe. So when you say these things, you're being more mindful. You drop to the heart space. Those aren't my thoughts. That's my programming. That's my avatar thinking that. That's not the true me. It's time for the true you to come out. So exercise to move the body. Students, what am I gonna say next? What am I gonna say? <laughs> Meditation. <laughs> Meditation. Meditation 
is not what you think. Um, do you remember? Uh, what was that? It was on Nickelodeon. And I'll never forget it. Uh, it was Looney Tunes. And one of the, the girl bunny rabbit. What is it? Animaniacs. Thank you, Ray. Peanut gallery in the background. Thank you, Ray. Animaniacs. It was the girl bunny. What's the girl bunny's name? That's a test. And she would sit there and go, oh, what a loon I am. And that's what I thought meditation was. And she would sit there, you know, in the lotus position and say, oh, what a loon I am. And that's what I always thought it was weird. It was hokey, everything else. Meditation could be a mindful walk. You're using your senses. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you know? What is the breeze like? You're just observing. And when you're observing, you're not thinking. But you know what? You tend to think sometimes or a lot of times in meditation. I stunk at meditation because I'm like, oh my gosh, there's too much in here. And the guides are like, that's, you're reprogramming a pattern. It's going to take a hot minute, girl, calm down. You should hear my guide sometimes. Cause they're like, whoa, it's okay. And others are like really sweet and really kind, but others are goofy. Lao Tzu, the ascended master Lao Tzu, he is really funny. <laughs> if you ever channel him, he is very funny. But they'll say, you have to look at those thoughts to learn how to let them float by. So don't say, oh, I can't meditate because I've got too much in my head. No, that's the point. You're supposed to look at the stuff in your head. What is the stuff in my head? Man, I'm thinking about how much I have to go grocery shopping way too much. Maybe I'm hungry. Because I'm thinking, okay, I even did that today. I meditated and I was in a good state. What am I going to eat for dinner? Oh yeah, I'm meditating. And I'm doing really good and I'm doing really good. What time did Ray said he was going to get home? Okay, nope, okay. <laughs> and then I go back and then I start, and I'll think about like silly things. I really need to get my hair cut. Okay, nope, let's go back over here. That's the point. The point is that we just like, oh, what a loon I am. And we sit there and we're absolutely perfect at it. And nothing's in there. There's stuff in there. We're working at not thinking all the stuff as much or being affected by the stuff as much. That's the point. That's all it is. You can listen to music, just piano. You can have a guided meditation. Shamanic drumming is my favorite. I did that today. I love it. I used to hate it and now I love it. But it's about being and you're sinking into your body. They always say go to the breath because that is easy. You're going to the breath. I can't go with the beat of my heart because I have PVCs, the premature ventricular contractions, which means I'm like a total drum bongo solo in there. So there's no, with my tachycardia plus the skipped beats and then mitral valve prolapse, it's like a funky beat in there all the time. So I can't go by my heart, <laughs> but I'll go by the breath. I do love to, you wanna meditate in the noise so you can learn how to silence it. Meditate in the noise. It's annoying. And then it gets so much better. And the way you do that is listen to a song and then pick out things you normally wouldn't pick out. Not the drum, we hear the drum, they're awesome. Pick out the tambourine or you know something else. Is there a flute playing? Is there a violin? What are the other vocals? What are they saying? Can you, it's also working on your psychic senses too, but you're tuning into all of that and you're learning to redirect. So that way, when you are meditating and being calm, just sitting out there and being. So like right now, I used to be totally, I'm doing a Zoom and they're mowing outside and now they're like weed whacking and it's loud and it's not bothering me where before it was like, too much extra sensory stuff. So practice meditating. And some days you'll love this, some days you'll hate that. <laughs> some days, and I fall asleep a lot of times when I meditate. So don't be like, oh, I fall asleep when I meditate. I do all the time. It's okay, don't worry about it. 
because there's something else you're meant to do. Maybe you're meant to heal. Maybe, you know, they're working on you, something like that. There's stuff going on and there's a reason for it. So don't normally I'll have a feeling of I'm very tired. Um, and it's a different feeling than when I'm having episodes type of exhaustion. And I'm like, oh, they're telling me to lay down and meditate. And I could just go right into that place. But it took me a while to get there, like a while to get there. So don't be hard on yourself. Okay. Find a tribe. Find people that you can freely talk to with free of judgment, all that cruddy daddy daddiness. Find your people that you can talk to. You are not alone. Speaking stuff out loud is vital. Because I find that when I speak out loud, it's not so bad. You're exercising your chakras by utilizing them in this sense. So being able to speak my truth, looking at myself in the mirror and talking it out to myself, telling my husband certain things, talking with my daughter about it, my family, talking on a Zoom to everybody about my stuff. So finding a tribe and people that you can trust to be able to share these things with because you're not alone. And knowing you're not alone is so helpful. And if people are judging, then those aren't your people that you should be sharing it with. And some people don't know how to process things and all of that, and that's okay. That's their choice and their path, but there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with anyone. Random acts of kindness. My husband is in construction and he's like, I'm not doing random acts of kindness like you are. I'm not, I'm not like doing good deeds. You like live your purpose and you're helping people. He goes, I'm in construction. <laughs> um, and I'm like, but yet you do do that because a neighbor needs you to fix this. Someone's stranded over here. You go and jump them. You're doing this. He's constantly doing things for other people. And he's like, I never thought of that. So doing random acts of kindness, it's just because some people can feel like they don't matter and that they can just shrink, put their head in the sand and no one would care. But you know what? You do matter. Spirit, they'll say things so simplistically. They're like, look at your hand identifies with the thumb, identifies with the pointer. This is the pinky. They each have, you know, their own little function. They're each called something different, but they're a part of a whole, the collective. This is Sherry, mom, Anisha, all part of the greater whole. We're meant to go through things individually and have our own paths, but we're meant to connect so that we can help one another and support one another, but it's finding those people, that's the kicker too. But speaking your truth, and if someone's like, says something, it's being able to learn to stand up for yourself too, and that's not your person. Hey, I made it through another page, there's hope yet. Okay, grounding. Grounding is being in nature 100%, absolutely. But grounding is being in the body and feeling those high vibrational feelings. Sometimes we just need a break, a reset. Sometimes things are just too much. You're rolling things around in your brain. You need to make a decision. You don't understand this. How could this happen to me? I need a break. It can be for a half a day. It can be for an hour, whatever you can find. If you can take a weekend, great. But it's doing things to reset your being. Call upon those friends. Hey, girls night. I need it. <laughs> Do things that you enjoy. Hobbies. Always making sure you're incorporating things that just light you up and you are passionate about. Because it's lighting you up. Try new hobbies. Listening to music whatever it might be. I love to garden. I love to decorate. Sometimes we just feel it. 
a couple of days ago, I, um, Ray wanted to take me out to dinner. He got all dressed up. And then I went in and I sat on the bed in his office and I had this look like I was gonna murder someone on my face because I was mad. I used my energy to get ready. I waited all day. I've been excited about going out to dinner with you. He's been super busy and we're finally able to go out to dinner and now I'm sick. There goes another night. So I was like, Meh. and then I just, it's okay. Quite another night. So Kristen had a moment. We're five, maybe 10. <laughs> and I had a little moment. We'll go out another night. Tried it again the next night. Nope, that didn't work. So what did I do? I cried. <laughs> so I went from being mad to just full on crying. <laughs> I wanted to go out and I got just up and it's in my hair. Come on, man, it looks good. It was a good hair day. Nope, didn't go out, but he brought me home sushi. So it was good, <laughs> but it's okay. I love you. <laughs> so what's the bunny's name? Now I wanna know, does anyone know the bunny's name from Animaniacs? I really need to know now. So regroup. Through all of these practices, through speaking to myself, constantly speaking to myself, through looking at these shadow aspects, asking myself why, why is my body feeling this? Why do I feel fear right now? Why am I upset right now? Maybe you don't even know why you're upset right now. It's okay to talk to a healthcare professional to figure out what's going on. It's coming out more and more about mental health and things like that. Babs, Babs, you're my hero. Thank you. Babs, bunny. She was the, oh, what a loon I am. Thank you. It was the duck? I don't know. We'll debate this in a bit, Beth. <laughs> we'll have Ray and Beth debate. Okay. So. blog about it, journal it, talk to yourself about it, talk to other people about it. I put videos out there. You don't have to put a video out there. You can just type things out. You can just journal for yourself, journal by typing in the computer, journal by an actual, having a journal, pen to paper. Letting out your feelings really does help. And please talk to someone about it as well, because everybody in this life matters. Every single person matters. I don't care who you are and I don't care if I don't know you, you freaking matter. I'm telling you right now. I didn't think I did. I thought, what's the point of me here? I'm holding people back. I can't travel. Why, why am I here just sitting on the couch? I tell my husband on the daily, I love what I do. I love him, I'm so grateful for him and he's so good at what he does and I'm so proud of him, he owns his own business. Look at my daughter, this, da, 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 da. all these different things every single day. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Allow yourself to reset. You have to allow yourself to be loved, to feel love, to feel the feels because we're here to feel the feels. We want, we want to feel the good stuff, but you have to feel the not so fun stuff in order to break through that. And then you're like, that wasn't so bad. Or sometimes it kind of feels kind of bad, <laughs> but it is what it is. And there's beauty on the other side. I promise you the month of May this year for me was an egoic massive breakthrough. I want to say I'd go through it again, but I don't want to go through it again, <laughs> but it was so worth it, right? It was so worth it for me to be where I am now. No one is perfect. Cut yourself some slack. My biggest thing that I can share right now, and then I'm gonna just say a few affirmations 
because I had someone ask me about, because I healed my skincare and reinventing the self. I think I'm going to do a reinventing the self separately. How about we do that? Because I think the mental health is really important. And then I'll add that as well. So we'll skip over that and do that next time. Regrouping. Give me just a moment. Kind of some mental chatter going in there. I hope that some of these practices, some of these physical things that you can do to help trigger the vagus nerve assist you, but the talking through thing part is massive change. Because like I said, you're resetting your frequency set point. This, that's the whole journey. Like, it's like a Mario Brothers game. You're going from down here to go way up here. And it is 100% possible. I promise you because I've done it. I used to get angry. I did not start cursing until I got really sick because it was a way for me to sucker punch my heart problem. Kind of embarrassing to say, but I'm totally free with it now. We get angry. It's okay, it's more okay for people to say, you know, that they cry about it, but we get angry, people. Let's talk about it. I would get angry and I would invent words. And it's funny because my friend Anne and Derek that I would talk about in the beginning, they would say when we were in high school and someone would curse, they'd be like, don't say, and they were very honest. They were very sweet about it. They weren't teasing at all. They're like, don't say that around Chrissy. And what would I, potty mouth, you potty mouth. You should hear me now. <laughs> right, mom? So proud. <laughs> You're so proud, proud moment. But we get angry. So something that happened, this is mindfulness, and then I want to get to a Q&A. I, have I mentioned I like jalapenos, the jalapeno poppers? <laughs> so my daughter and I like to eat like the pickled jalapenos and I get big, huge jar. And this was a couple of years ago. It was, um, we had redone our kitchen since then, but we had the pantry, open up the pantry doors and it's the type of pantry where there's like a blind spot right there and you have to like reach in there and hope you're grabbing something. And it was like right in kind of in the crook of that spot and it's a big glass jar. So I grabbed it and I have four animals, two cats and two dogs. The cats are just like dogs. So something drops on the floor, they all run over. So I grab it, slips through my hand and just goes on the floor. Old Kristen would have been so so mad because now I got to pick this up and now there's glass and I hope I get it. And dogs don't hurt themselves. And then I'd get anxious because, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? They're going to swallow some glass and you know where your mind goes, but I was so mad. I dropped it. Oh my gosh. But I didn't do that. It dropped and I was like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, let's go. Come on, girls. So I got everybody in the room, Cass and everyone went in there. It was like the Pied Piper. I was so proud close the door and I'm like, man, my floor is going to be so clean. I will never forget that moment. This happened several years ago. I will never forget that moment because after I was done cleaning everything and then the dogs come out and they're licking everything because they smell it still, even though you clean it, they got to lick it all. And then I got to wipe it all down again because they're licking on the cabinets, <laughs> you know, the whole cycle with animals. But I was like, I didn't get mad. I didn't, I didn't go to anger. I didn't slam my hand down because I was so mad at myself for being so dumb for dropping that. That's growth. And I was really grateful. And I told my husband about it. I dropped the jalapenos and I was happy about it. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> like, good job. Gold star. <laughs> you get a treat tonight. But I was very proud of myself. So appreciate the little things, even if you go down that route. And what do we do, especially in the spiritual community? 
I should know better because I'm spiritual, right? We all do it. We all see it. We all do it. Cut yourself some slack, people. We're human. It's okay because, again, we're in the process of reprogramming ourselves. We are not perfect. Sometimes we kind of fall back a bit, and that's okay. And what that means, that's why um, astrological events will do that. And it will, why is this coming back up again? Because it wasn't fully healed yet. There's more healing. Oh, there's more healing I need to do there. So now when crap comes up, yeah, Kirsten, <laughs> yeah. So when things come back up, don't go, why is this coming back up again? And I just don't want this to do it again. I really should have been an actress, right? I've been good. I think I'm tired. <laughs> I get like punch drunk when I'm tired. So I would spiral out of control with that. But when you actually realize I healed that or I bounced back faster than I normally would, that's big, fat, huge growth, right? Because you observed it and you're able to course correct a lot sooner than maybe you would have before. So I hope. This helps. This is recorded and will be on my Infinite Heart and Soul YouTube page. I think I'll go ahead and share it on Infinite Heart and Soul on Facebook, as well as my personal page as well, and my class pages. That way you have easy accessibility to it so you can check back. But I'd love your feedback. Let me know if this helps. Even if it's just, it was great to know that you said this out loud. <laughs> Because saying it out loud is super healing. And you know what I'm really good at is talking. Ask my mom. I say it a lot. I know, right? See, you should have been an actress too. Oh my God. My husband's famous words. Because I said to him one morning, I had a dream. Something came up for you. So let me know when you're awake because there's going to be a lot of words being flung at you. And he's like, I'm awake. I'm ready. Okay. <gasps> And then he goes, that was a lot of words in a very short period of time. I'm like, you said you were ready, man. It's a gift. Thank you. My throat chakra, very open, people. So, <laughs> so now I want to open this up for any kind of questions or if you just want to share something. Whatever you want to do, I'm up for it. So again, I'm not doing like private readings right now because my energy is starting to dwindle down, but I wanted to make sure I spent this time to at least get this, the guts out. And then the reinventing the self part we'll do on another night. Um, but go ahead and unmute yourselves. Robin. Oh, okay. Robin and then Kirsten. What I find is that as this continue, this journey continues, my brain gets smarter and I remember things that happened that I didn't remember before. Like, oh, that trauma, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot about that, you know, that kind of thing. So like, yeah. I didn't remember that and then all of a sudden I did. And so I know it's just from working on my brain and getting more aware and smarter. Yes, that see, and what Robin said, this is such, an amazing point. Thank you, Robin, because when you go on this path, things will come up. I talk about emotional blind spot. There are subconscious beliefs and things that have happened that you didn't know affected you. And it did. Like this morning, because there's someone that is in my family, in my ancestral line that would get afraid over things like that, like a, a couch, maybe. What if I don't like the set that I ordered and it's not gonna work out and they would get anxious about it. When that happened to me this morning, I went, oh, oh my gosh, uh, this isn't mine. This is, I had no reason to think that. That's from my lineage, my ancestral line. So as you raise your vibration, don't think you're going backwards because more shadow aspects or blind spots, emotional blind spots are coming forward. It's because you're growing more and they're like, oh, okay, let's fling this stuff at you. And you're going, oh my God, why is this coming at me? But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's the crappy happy. Remember the guys always call it the crappy happy. When stuff gets flung at you, it's meant that you're, you're ready. Yay, I'm ready. 
I feel like crap, but good stuff is coming. I promise you. Robin, that's so, I'm so glad. This is why I love sharing because it's like, you guys, everybody has something to add, to help, to share. There's so much. Thank you, Robin. That's amazing. Thank you. Kirsten. Hi there. Hi. Mm -hmm. So my question is, you've talked about this before, but um, when your gifts and abilities opened up for you, um, was it like one day you were one way and the next day you woke up in the morning and it wasn't like a light switch? How did you feel? What was it like? What did you notice that was different? Okay. Hey, that's a good question. So <clears throat> I would be sitting, it was like all of a sudden, it was like, I smell smoke. That's my Aunt Donna over there. Um, I see the letter A just floating there in the, in the air. Okay, I'm starting to see people. It was like a light switch that turned on. Okay. But then what they did, because I had such issues with myself because of the bullying, I needed to trust myself. So everything opened. I could hear, see, feel, and know. And it was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I had it for a bit. Mm -hmm. They took it all away, except for the knowing and the feeling. And I'm like, <clears throat> why can't I see? Where did I go with that? With my ego? Am I not worthy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not it at all. There is a lesson there for you to learn. Or sometimes they mute it because other things are meant to come forward more first. Mm -hmm. It is all a process. Everybody is different. For me, it was I had to trust myself. And when I leaned into those gifts, that's when everything else opened up. And I'm like, oh, yay. And they're like, it's been there all along. Mm -hmm. And then it grows more and more and more. These basic gifts, the hearing, seeing, feeling, knowing, sometimes taste mm -hmm. and smell are for everybody. Mm -hmm. But then when you start growing with them, they turn into superpowers mm -hmm. and your own really unique things. And you can do different stuff with them. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Trista. Sure. Okay. Oh, sorry, Sherry. I'm going to let so you. I was just going to tell you Trista's hand was raised. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Hi. Hi. You were talking about the throat chakra and um, being like true to yourself. Well, this week I have kind of just said things to people that I normally would not say. And, and share things about myself that I normally would not do. And then I actually did that today out of the blue at a store. And I like immediate like went coiled back and was like, oh no. <sighs> but I did do that. So yeah. So I can, it's crazy because the feeling of it is unique. So yeah. Yes. But when you're having these feelings, it's like, yay. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Yay. Oh my God. Oh no. Right. It's, you're like back and forth. Cause you're feeling the ego and the spirit at the same time. Right. Yeah. That's Cause it, it just happened. I just, it just popped out. We were at a metaphysical store and I was looking at herbs mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, cause it brought me back to a different memory. And I said, I normally wouldn't say this to anybody. And I said it. And then I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't bother you. And she's like, no. But yeah, um, so things just kind of have happened. So I nor I won't even think about it before saying it, and then I'll and then I'll freak out about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly what that's like, Krista. I love you. You're amazing. Let's. I mean, just take a moment to give one another just such gratitude because this is such growth. And Trista and I are always like the first ones to cry because we're always like so emotional. And we, I would always think it was such a fault, but it's a superpower, right? Like it's, we're feeling the feelings and that's a good thing. So um, that's, that's amazing. Yay! That's like such growth and it's so empowering. And then don't worry about, because like I said, you're like, yay look what I did you're like talking to yourself yay look what I did oh my god I can't believe I did that are they upset are they did I offend them today yay but I did that so like your mind goes in nine million different directions um 
and it's really funny. And when I discuss with my husband about this kind of stuff, he's like, because a lot of times I'll, I'll ask him, like, what are you thinking about? And he's like, I want Twizzlers and we don't have any. And, you know, like something like that, that's like silly. And it's like, I'm thinking about like something like really deep and in depth that I'm spiraling with everything. And it's like, <laughs> just show, it's just funny, like between his mind and my mind at times. So it's hysterical, but give yourself, the word is grace. Give yourself grace. That's amazing, Trista. Oh, thank you. And thank you for an amazing, beautiful class, like always. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad it helped. I'm glad it helped. I'm so glad you guys are here. Does anyone else have any other thoughts or want to share anything or anything at all? You're feeling good? You're feeling okay? What do you think? Yeah? Okay. I think with that, I bid you adieu. I thank all of you so much for being here. Um, that was a, a lot of words being flung at you. <laughs> so I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Um, let me know. You can email me, message me and let me know. Thank you, Manisha. I'm so happy. I'm genuinely happy to see each of your faces um, because you all just mean a lot to me, even if I've just met you. Um, so my seraphim buddy out there, you know who you are. <laughs> What's your question? Why would that have to say I don't know. Okay, peanut gallery. <laughs> Ray's question is why would why would Babs the bunny say, oh what a loon I am? That was his question. Beth, you can go ahead and answer that. <laughs> but hey, props to Beth for knowing Beth. Yes. <laughs> Hi Ray. No clue. I just looked up her name and I didn't just send you through Hi Ray. I didn't sure. just send you a a uh, picture of her on your messenger so oh that. okay thank her you meditating. So, <laughs> i miss i man saturday morning cartoons were they not the best like animated and all of that, that the was, old stuff the old stuff yeah they yeah. were the best they were just the best <laughs> so my husband is a big batman fan so like the original the batman that was on i would always watch that it was just so much fun but you still I, watch cartoons yes like last weekend, we watched Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> that's just, it's just funny. <laughs> your inner child, people, that's the biggest <laughs> thing. You want your inner child out. So I, again, okay, I said I was going to go, but one more thing. Your inner child wants to be free. Your inner child wants to be heard. They want to cry. They want to feel. They want to love. They want to be creative. Um, they want to laugh. So allow them to be silly. And I always thought that my childlike aspect um, Cause I remember when Ray and I got, we got married at 20 years old. And I remember thinking, I'm still sitting here watching cartoons. Um, I love Lilo and Stitch. Yes, Trista. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I always felt like, and someone actually said to me in my family, when are you going to grow up? And I was embarrassed <laughs> by that. I was really embarrassed by it. And now I'm understanding that it's, such a part of me to be childlike and to be goofy and to be silly and I can be serious and I can you know put that hat on and get stuff done and do things and talk about stuff and then you know there's a time and place for it oh my gosh I love Full House so <laughs> Scooby-Doo and Bugs Bunny oh my gosh yes all of it but let your inner child come out and be silly and be goofy. Um, I'm teaching another friend of mine that's close to me too. I'm teaching her my silly ways because um, I'll we'll just break out into song and dance. I make everything a song. And when Emily is on like a Zoom call for class, um, she'll say, mom, I'm on a Zoom call. So you can't sing everything for the next hour because when I'm giving that, oh, I need to give the dogs their cookie. Um, I almost forgot. <laughs> they didn't get their cookie tonight. And I always sing. I wonder if she'll do it. Who wants a cookie? Yeah, there you go. Hey, baby. <laughs> sing. You see those eyeballs. But I sing absolutely everything. And sometimes I like opera it or something. And But be silly. Be goofy. Live it up. We only live in this life once. So might as well be your best version of yourself. 
and cut yourself some slack and give yourself some grace. But with that, I give you all so much love. Um, enjoy your weekend. Be safe for 4th of July. Many blessings to all of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.